Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible. We would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So picture the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sada, and today we're investigating the application of the Generalized Autoregressive Score Model, or GAS model for short, uh, on an example of a Johnson SQ distribution. This is where GAS models truly shine, uh, incorporating multiple parameters and a distribution function that on its own fits stock market data or financial data in general quite well. In one of the previous videos, we have investigated the fundamentals, the basics, or the concept behind gas modeling uh, on an example of a normal distribution. So please check this out if you are here for the basics. This video will be about an application of gas on a more sophisticated and uh, mathematically satisfying example. We still have got uh, our sample of 10 years um, worth of daily returns in S&P 500. Let's just calculate them. Index value today divided by index value yesterday minus one. Apply throughout. And let's start by fitting um, a Johnson SU distribution to our data um, without any gas effects whatsoever. For that, we need to assume starting values of our location and scale parameters. Again, Johnson SU function, the probability density function is given over here, uh, does have two location parameters and two scale parameters. This is due to the fact that uh, it has got an arc um, hyperbolic sine function inside, and uh, two parameters uh, scale the x variable, or our return, and two parameters scale the resulting uh, arc hyperbolic sine function. So let's start with location one and scale one parameters uh, to be equal to 0% and 1%, and location two and scale two parameters to be zero and one. So the starting values would be just the ones we have inputted here. We'll allow them to vary given the logic of maximum likelihood, but for now, let's just persist with those parameters. Now we are ready to evaluate the probability density function of the Johnson SU distribution. Uh, it is equal to our second scale parameter, delta, divided by our first scale parameter, lambda, times the square root of two pi, and then we take care of the exponent of negative a half times our scaled arc hyperbolic sine. For that, we need our second location parameter gamma plus our second scale parameter delta times the arc hyperbolic sine itself. In Excel, it's a sin of scaled x. So return minus the first location parameter, which is uh, in respect to x, divided by the first scale parameter, lambda, again, which scaled the x variable itself. Then we have to square the whole parentheses and close the parentheses for the exponent. And finally, we divide it by the square root of 1 plus scaled x squared. So the x, the return, minus the location parameter, Xi, that is relevant for x as well, divided by the first scale parameter lambda squared, and we close the parentheses for the square root function. This is quite a bulky calculation, but what is quite uh, useful for the purposes of gas modeling is that it is just a conjunction of elementary functions uh, on top of each other, which means that the derivatives of this function with respect to any of our locational scale parameters would also be uh, comprised of elementary functions and we'll be able to have closed form solutions for them, which is instrumental for gas modeling and for um, tractable solutions of our gas models. And here we have got the partial derivatives of our probability density function with respect to the, to the first location parameter xi, the first scale parameter lambda, the second location parameter gamma, and the second scale parameter, delta. They are of varying complexity. Uh, the partial derivative with respect to lambda is um, the most uh, complex, the most bulky. 
given the fact that lambda is occurring in three places in the original probability density function. However, none of them are uh, overly complex and uh, something that Axel wouldn't be able to handle. So let's implement that. So for the partial derivative of our probability density function with respect to the first location parameter xi, we simply need to refer to the probability density function that we have just calculated times the deviation of our return from the first location parameter xi divided by the first scale parameter lambda squared times 1 plus scaled x squared. So return minus xi over lambda squared and that completes the first component of our partial derivative and then we add the density function again times the second scale parameter delta times the scaled arc hyperbolic sine which is the second location parameter gamma plus the second scale parameter delta times the arc hyperbolic sine of scaled x so return minus xi divided by lambda and in the denominator of this particular expression we would have the first scale parameter lambda times the square root of 1 plus the squared scaled x so x minus psi divided by lambda all squared and we close the appropriate number of parentheses resulting in the value of the partial derivative of 348.66 that can be interpreted as for the first sample day the first location parameter needs to be higher for the distribution function to better fit the data quite unsurprisingly given that we assume the location parameter 1 to be 0% and the return is quite a bit higher for the partial derivative for the first scale parameter lambda this is where the expression is the most challenging however quite uh, easily implementable uh, minus density function divided by the scale parameter lambda plus density function times delta which is the second scale parameter times the deviation of the return from the location parameter xi times the scaled arc hyperbolic sine so location parameter 2 gamma plus second scale parameter delta times the arc hyperbolic sine of scaled x so return minus psi divided by lambda and in the denominator of this expression we will have lambda squared we we'll have lambda squared so scale uh, parameter 1 squared times the square root of 1 plus scaled x squared so return minus location parameter psi divided by scale parameter lambda squared close the appropriate number of parentheses and finally the third component is the probability density function times the squared deviation of our return from the location parameter xi divided by the scale parameter lambda cubed times 1 plus scaled x squared so return minus psi over lambda squared to close the appropriate number of parentheses to arrive at the uh, gradient for the scale parameter lambda for the uh, partial derivative with respect to the second location parameter gamma we refer to negative probability density function times scaled arc hyperbolic sine so location parameter gamma plus scale parameter delta times arc hyperbolic sine of scaled x so return minus the first location parameter xi divided by the scale parameter lambda And finally, for the second scale parameter, uh, the partial derivative of the probability density function with respect to delta is minus probability density function is equal to the probability density function divided by the second scale parameter delta minus the probability density function times the arc hyperbolic sine of scaled x, so return minus location parameter xi divided by the scale parameter lambda times the scaled arc hyperbolic sine so the second location parameter gamma plus the second scale parameter delta times the arc hyperbolic sine we have already calculated 
and that completes the calculations of our partial derivatives. Now we can model our gas effects using the adjustment parameters here. We start at values of zero simply because we want to first evaluate the model without gas effects so that then we can use a likelihood ratio test to evaluate their statistical significance, the joint statistical significance of gas effects in all four of our distribution parameters. However, before we do that, uh, a simple technical manipulation, given those gradient values are quite large and uh, small changes in adjustment parameters can result in huge changes in the underlying distribution, which would uh, um, sometimes prevent solver from efficiently performing the task, let's divide those gradient values by large numbers. So let's say a million for this gradient, a million for this one as well, and uh, 10,000 for those two, 10 to the fourth. That simply makes the numerical optimization a little bit more workable. No conceptual reason for that, simply computational uh, convenience. So for the location parameter, the location parameter xi, we refer to the previous value of it, plus the adjustment parameter specific to this uh, parameter, times the gradient for that parameter in the previous day. And we use the same logic for all the remaining parameters, referring to the uh, adjustment and the gradients from the previous day. And then we can evaluate the density and the new gradients and continue this procedure throughout the sample. And finally, we can calculate log likelihood, the sum of natural logarithms of individual probability densities. Uh, however, here I would advise to input the if error function on top of the log, so that if there is an error, we just return a large negative number, so that uh, solver can converge more efficiently. To start with, let's estimate um, our Johnson SU distribution with no gas effects. So let's go data solver. Set our objective, the log likelihood. We want to maximize it by simply changing the four distribution parameters. No gas effects for now. And we untick this box because some of the uh, parameters, location parameters to be exact, might be negative. And we have optimized our Johnson SU distribution. We have got our optimal parameters. So let's just keep track of our starting value of log likelihood to make sure um, that our gas effects are statistically significant. So then we go data solver again and augment our variables with the four adjustment parameters and click solve. That can take quite a bit of time, so be patient. And the algorithm has just converged to optimal parameters, we can see that two of the adjustment parameters, namely for lambda and gamma, are positive, consistent with the logic of improving fit, whereas psi and delta are negative, meaning that the distribution evolves in the opposite direction of best fit. And we have got an improved log likelihood um, value. So let's calculate the likelihood ratio, two times the improvement in log likelihood, and we can evaluate it for significance using a right-tailed chi-squared distribution with the number of the degrees of freedom equal to the number of additional parameters. Uh, we introduced four adjustment parameters on top of the parameters we had, and this leads to our chi-squared uh, test resulting in an overwhelmingly significant result. This p-value is very close to zero, meaning that there are significant gas effects we have captured using our model. So let's look at how the location parameter evolves, which would be a measure of um, average return. Again, not exactly, given how moments of Johnson SU function um, are calculated, but we can see periods of high and low return over the course of the 10 year period. In terms of the scale parameter, we see it's almost monotonly uh, decreases. That's the first scale parameter lambda. The second scale parameter, delta, also quite monotonously decreases, whereas the second location parameter, gamma, behaves, um, again, 
in an up and down uh, way reflecting uh, bullish and bearish markets potentially. And this is how uh, four uh, separate parameters can be modeled in a time evolving fashion using the logic of generalized autoregressive score and uh, using partial derivatives with respect to those distribution parameters. Uh, gas models are very flexible. Uh, you can use them on top of almost any distribution or a mixture of distributions um, and in many time series uh, applications. Uh, but Johnson SU gas with uh, financial market data is among the most um, natural applications of this tool. Please leave a like on this video if it's helpful. In the comments below, I'm going to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics so that I me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel because it supports on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.